Today on UEN PD TV, we're going to have a conversation about social and emotional learning. Today we have with us Dr. Ben Springer. Ben has been a teacher, a school psychologist, and a special ed director. And he's going to talk to us about everything that he's learned about social and emotional learning. Welcome to hey, PD thank, TV. Thanks for having me. This is, like I said, I could geek out about this all morning. That's what I like to hear. All right, good. So, how are you today, Ben? Have I'm you great. had a good morning? I've had a good morning. I love being here on the U of U campus. It's a good campus. This building's beautiful. This is very nice, so thanks for having me. Well, we're glad to have you here. <laughs> so, we're talking about social-emotional learning. First of all, what is social and emotional learning? And why is it such a big deal now? I feel like every district that I go into is rolling out some SEL um, program. Totally. The revolution is working. Mental health professionals... <laughs> Have we, you done this? I, I can't take all the credit. <laughs> but mental health professionals for about 17 years, it's always been about SEL. And so I honestly don't have a great, like, you know, perfect answer about why all of a sudden. But I can tell you through trainings in the past 10 years, it's been a total difference. Like literally the decade. I can I can map it out in the, like, you know, a decade. SEL has started to become more and more... Um, discuss culturally in schools, mm -hmm. in communities, and in families. So even pop culture, like, it's it gets talked about more, just like, uh, you know, our social emotional well-being. And so what is it? It's SEL, when we talk about it in schools, it's like the content, methodology, and delivery of, of social um, interactions and interpersonal skills. And then if I would, I would say, um, almost like emotional self-regulation. Mm -hmm. So those are the two, when you say SEL, you're saying social and emotional. And so when people are, are talking about that, what we're really looking for is your interpersonal skills, how to develop those, how to develop them in, in kids in school, and then um, emotional self-regulation, how, how do you develop that in school? So um, I have no real you know, understanding about why it's so hot right now, such a hot topic. I love it. And <laughs> you're gonna embrace I'm like, it. oh my gosh, yes, yes, please. <laughs> we're on camera, can we talk about it? So. Um, yeah, visit with any mental health practitioner that you work with in schools to learn more about it, but it's essentially the methodology of how do you teach those skills in school. Absolutely. So how do we get teachers to be so excited about it like you are? I love your enthusiasm <laughs> here. When there's such an emphasis on testing oh my and gosh. standards, how, how can we blend those two together? Oh my gosh. So I'm the son of two lifelong educators. Um, both my parents were, were teachers, and anytime I want to geek out with an educator and ask them, hey, what if we try this thing or could we try this new social emotional learning skill? I, I have a filter that in my head that says, would you give this to your mom? Mm -hmm. you knowing how busy she is, yes. knowing how dedicated she is to her, you know, her, her work and her craft as a teacher. Um, I have uh, a lot of family members actually that work in education. So the, the filter is, would you give it to them? Would you ask them to do it? Because I could talk about SEL and say, well, it's so serious. You have to take you know, care of social emotional needs of kids. But teachers aren't, you know, they're not na naive to that. They totally get it. They're like, uh, yes, it's important, obviously. But they are really, really held up to the standard to teach a lot of high rigor. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the $6 million question. I have like a $1.3 million answer, so it's not, it's not the trade-off's <laughs> not great. But until there's like a summative rating for social-emotional skills, mm -hmm. it won't ever balance out for teachers because okay. that's what the focus is. Um, the other thing is, is I'm really, really interested why we would ask teachers to try and, and balance something that's so difficult without a really strong, stronger early intervention program. Um, I think the state of Utah should really start considering state-funded preschool programs. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about social emotional learning, yeah, there's stuff we can do in, in classrooms and there's stuff that we can do to compensate, but so much of this stuff is so more easily introduced to families and kids earlier than it is, it is later. That being said, I'm a total pragmatist, so you do have to introduce this stuff in the schools and you do have to share it. And so something that uh, my colleagues and I have come up with, we call it the SAFE Classroom. And so this is something, it's, uh, it's basically an acronym, it's also like a poster that teachers can have up in class. Um, if you do this every once in a while, it's not going to help any kid. But there are simple steps done daily that I think you can introduce social emotional learning all the time and really high, um, high, high impact. The first thing we call it is SAFE, it's like an acronym, is salutations. So greet every kid. You've seen the viral videos of people yes. hugging and handing and doing high fives. The different handshakes. The different like robot, hello, yeah. welcome students, whatever it is, um, greet them and, and greet them with a positive mantra. Mm -hmm. um, every one of us needs to see an adult talking positively that we admire. And even in times that are difficult or 
you know, just a gloomy day, kind of a tough day, you need to hear adults speaking positively. Mm -hmm. it, it, kids need to hear that. There's so much modeling that goes on. So it's a really simple step, but I think every educator on the planet can, can practice a mantra, keep one mantra all year, change it up every day, mix it up, you know, monthly, thematically, however you do it, but do, it, do a salutation with a positive mantra is a, is a big one. The second one is ask questions. Um, we call these, you know, in pedagogy, formative assessment, getting feedback from your kids about, how did I do? Did, did you get the fractions business that we did? So um, by just doing really open, honest, formative assessments and asking kids questions, it allows them to understand this feedback loop that's really real. It's like, wait, the, the teacher will listen to my opinion on this? And opening that door, because all of us, I, don't, I haven't met an educator who doesn't want to hear like, how am I doing, what, what do they do? And go right to your consumer on that. So ask them questions, it opens the door for uh, the kids to be able to talk to the teacher about anything. And that's really what you want. Social emotional learning is a lot, you can't get anywhere without safety. And, and those positive mantras, asking questions really helps create an environment of safety. The, the um, second part in the, or the third part of this kind of safe acronym is fun. I know this is like silly and I don't want to make it sound like cheesy, but we couldn't put unexpected because that's not a cute acronym. It's not. So you have to have the fun. <laughs> so make some, create unexpectedness in your curriculum and in, in, in your design to engage students, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many different methodologies about how to in encourage student engagement, you know, including opportunities to respond and just doing kind of like brain breaks or whatever they are. Yep. But the, the bottom line is introduce something unexpected and kind of fun in your day because we have to compete against something that no other classroom generation has had to compete against, which is screens. Right. I'm not here to say screens are bad or good or anything. They're, they're pretty, you know, they just enhance what we can do. But and it's the reality. It's the reality. And you gotta, you gotta understand it's a competition mm -hmm. and, and you gotta be able to, to, to play that game. And then the, the fourth and final step of the safe classroom is expectations. Um, Trauma-informed practice, social emotional learning is based on boundaries. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to be really behavioral rote in my classroom. I want to have a, you know, real, you can have an open classroom, but if we don't explicitly define behavioral expectations, relational expectations in the classroom, um, kids have to guess. And kids, mm -hmm. and adults for that matter, we're not great at guessing social emotional stuff. So, so um, prior to every activity, whether it's a quiz or a really interactive, fun, collaborative activity, give really clear, explicit expectations. So the, my, it's a long-winded answer. That's what you get when you talk with geeks. <laughs> but the, the idea is, how do you help teachers to, to balance? Um, one, it's a lot to ask. Acknowledge that every time. And two, there are daily steps that educators can do that will really, really help. And, and I think those are four of the best. Okay, so safe, safe. salutation, ask questions, Make it fun, fun and expectations. Totally, okay. every day. I love that, I feel like that's something we can do. Totally. So how can we ask our teachers to be great at teaching SEL or having experiences in their classrooms with SEL when they may not be the best at taking care of themselves? Boom, I'm so glad you said this. <laughs> okay, so. Teaching is hard. Teaching is so hard. It's so hard, it's, it's like, exhausting. It's exhausting, I substituted once for my mom who taught English forever. Um, in a summer school program and it was like maybe four periods not even like the whole full day and I remember the first period being like oh man this is kids boop, this beep, is beep, so beep. fun they love me second period I was like I need to be a bed I yes. need to sleep right now so one um, it's it's super super difficult and self-care is it's kind of pop culture it's kind of hot right now it is. I, I don't want to make it sound like it's some sort of trend if in, in, in teaching a content area, um, it's important to know your content. If you're, a content, if you're teaching math, it's important to know that. Um, however, I think good teaching, you can not have to be an expert in your content and still be a really good teacher. Mm -hmm. Social emotional learning is a little bit different. Kids can smell it on you. If, if you are not authentic and if you are just um, talking about social emotional learning because it was a check off of your box, kids are gonna be like, wait a second though, like, you seem really stressed out right now. Are you okay? <laughs> they, will, they will see right through it. And so the social emotional learning world, um, I believe, you know, being here on campus again on, uh, near, on the third floor near the ed psych department, I spent six years studying how do you teach social skills in a school setting. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the bottom line is this. It takes, it's not, it's not didactic, it's not instruction that, that works with social emotional learning. It's modeling. 
right? And it's practice. And so I would argue every educator that's really vested in teaching SEL, you know, com you know, work with your districts and your teams and they're adopting curricula and whatever, but take care of yourself. Kids will see that and they will see, I want to be at ease like Danny, I want to be at ease. Just right? so relaxed like, all the see, time. I mean, That's I what people <laughs> say about me. Like, <laughs> Danny's chill. And they look at me and they're like, he's a spaz. Is he okay? <laughs> so, but that's the thing. Kids pick up on it immediately. That's yeah. the, it's, it's that whole, it's a vibe that we all put out. And education, no matter how scientific we get about it, it's a human experience and it's about relationship. So you're talking about something you do for your own self-care mm -hmm. is you're reading this thing on Facebook. Yeah. So what about technology oh, yeah. and SEL? Is it, it, you said you don't want to be the guy that it's a, screens are bad or right, screens right. are good at the only choice. I think I heard you say something about balance. Yeah, what, do sure. you, what do you think about technology when it comes to our social and emotional needs? Totally, I love this, um, this all the hype around this word wellness. I think mm -hmm. it fits. So I love to talk about social media and screen time wellness. Okay. Um, what we do know is all of the kids that we work with are digital natives, meaning they have not lived in a world where this stuff hasn't existed. Right. Um, they've seen the glow. They've been. They see the how easy it is to to work. How it does everything it asks them to do. So you just. It's like uh, we joke with with parents when we do parent training. Technology is like toothpaste. Once you squeeze it out, you can't get it back in. <laughs> it's out there. You just got to deal with it. So that's where the balance comes in, and. Um, there's a lot of really great uh, resources out there, um, but technology and wellness for all of us should, should be a balance. And the trick behind the balance is being honest with kids and asking them about it. They know more about it than we do. Have them teach you about it. Get some, have them get some ownership about what they're doing. And um, a lot, a lot of, along the same lines of that safe principle, um, at home and at school, establish really explicit boundaries about how technology can be used. Um, kids get boundaries and they get expectations okay. and they need them. Um, their brains are developing and they're going to be prone to, you know, gravitate towards something that's super easy and they don't have to talk to you. And, it, you know, it's a, it's a very, um, that's why it's so uh, interesting for kids because it just does whatever they want them to do. Give them some boundaries, but also there's a, the flip side of that is if you say no phones, no screens in my classroom, blah, 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 you're also at risk of, of denying kids some really important 21st century skills. Right. And so um, boundaries and expectations and just talking to kids about how they use it is, I've found, a really helpful tool. Just we need to know more about how they use it and get to know it and don't think it's just some scary black mirror all the time. Okay, I like that. Because I think a lot of times uh, we make rules because of fear. Totally. Instead of being knowledgeable about it and then making realistic expectations for what 2019 looks like. Totally, and, and, and you learn, I just had a conversation with my daughter about Pinterest last night, I'm not even kidding. And I <laughs> was like, and I was like <laughs> it, it was like, that, that was the, the funny part was, I was like, wait a second, I want a board now. I didn't know that this was a thing. And she's like, yeah, and you can, you can eliminate things that you think are inappropriate, or you're not, and I'm like, do you do that? And she's like, well, yeah. Yeah, Dad. And so, um, not that it's like the, the perfect setup, because I was curious about why are you on that a lot? Like, what are you using? And to learn about it, it's not all bad on there. I mean, no. kids are finding a lot of self-expression and they have a lot of avenues that we never had as kids to connect with. So I think, you know, it's, it goes both ways. Just set clear boundaries and talk to your kids. Okay, so you've mentioned that uh, SEL has a lot of these soft skills, right? Mm -hmm. um, but these are kind of the things that companies want when we're hiring. Um, it's not necessarily, we want kids that can code or we need <laughs> <laughs> different things. We, we want kids that have mm -hmm. social, emotional well-being or they know how to relate to one another. How do we teach this in a classroom? Is there something specific that we can do totally. that will help our kids to be more hireable or better off when they leave to go to college? One, I think getting kids on board about that right mm -hmm. like just straight up talk to kids from preschool all the way to high school talk about hey th these skills have have relevance and don't just tell them because this is what employers want mm -hmm. a lot of kids aren't really motivated that developmentally until much later until they really need to make some money uh, so find it find relevancy like uh, we know two things that I believe in and that all SEL should really be focusing on all instruction should be focusing on kids just want to experience daily success and a sense of belonging and so if, if you want to teach soft skills or, or, or increase the relevancy of any skill that you're trying to, to teach, 
provide opportunities for them to succeed okay. and let them do that in a group of their of a, of a peer group of their choosing right so many times we think oh I'm, I'm, I'm learning I'm teaching soft skills by doing cooperative learning groups well there's a large percentage of the population that is uh, they tend to internalize and group collaborative work is anxiety causing. Mm -hmm. And you've got to let, let kids have a little bit more of a stake in how they do cooperative learning, right? Okay. Um, I think that, that that's, and, and they've got to practice with it. Um, those, those of us that are a little bit more introverted, um, collaborative work is still important and still a necessary skill, but the, the social emotional delivery and instruction and sensitivity to that should be, you're a valuable human being, you should be able to kind of navigate and tell somebody how you want to work within this group, and and then practice. So, you know, studying, teaching these types of skills in the school setting, it takes a ton of time, and that's why when when asked like, well, how do teachers balance it? I don't have a great answer because if you're being dead serious about teaching soft skills, mm -hmm. it's all about practice. And the closest model that we have for that, I you know, you have to draw from sports. Is I'm talking, it has to be. Here's the play. Here's we're going to practice it. And then it's going to go live, and you need feedback on each three of those stages. Okay. So here's the play in a cooperative group. Um, somebody's going to be an alpha, and they're going to take the lead, and they might say something that you don't agree with, but it's going to cause you anxiety to confront them. So let's talk about it. You role play. You talk about the play, and you um, introduce those soft skills that we know that happen in, in employment settings. Okay. Employment settings can be highly stressful for those of us that struggle with any sort of relational or, or, or emotional communication because they're so subtle. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody, when, when we grew up, it wasn't part of the SEL wasn't all the, the hype, and so you just kind of had to learn this the bumpy way. I think we know so much about it that we can start teaching kids from a very early age how to accomplish these things. So you drop the play, you practice it, and you let them go perform. If they bomb it, that's part of the learning, and you give them feedback, not, not reprimands. Totally, and having a safe classroom where it is, totally. it's okay to fail and come back and try again. Huge. Like, that's why we love these safe principles. If, if, if a teacher can, can do those things daily, it creates that safe environment where the teacher can fail and be like, did you, did you see that? I just spilled coffee all over myself. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> this is what embarrassment looks like. I get red and I don't feel like teaching. <laughs> that that is, is, kids will never, one, forget it. Two, they'll be so grateful that you're human, and so then, true. and then two, they're going to be like, I can make mistakes publicly, and it's not the end of the world. You know, that's what we need. We need to model kids, and that's why, you know, full circle going back to self care. I don't know how you teach this stuff if you know it's that the cliche is when you travel on an airplane, and the, you know the cabin pressure drops, and you've got to put the O2 on yourself before you can help a child. Mm -hmm. um, that's not just a cute little cliche in social moment. That's probably the most essential component. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. So you wrote a book. Yeah. It's called Happy Kids Don't Punch You in the Face. Yes. Which. It's true. It is. It's so true. <laughs> I, I can't imagine a happy kid punching that's, me that's in the right. face. That's right. Um, you talk about the four pillars of happiness. Yes. What are the four pillars of happiness and how does it relate to social oh emotional gosh. learning? I'm so glad you asked that one. Um, those, those four pillars of happiness come out of this research from the University of Connecticut and some colleagues that were formerly part of the University of Utah here, so it's, it's pretty awesome. close. Yeah, Go Utes. Go Utes is, 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 is a good mantra to have, everybody. Um, and so what these four pillars or four areas of human happiness are, they're actually totally evidence-based. This is not some sort of wonky, like, if you do these four things, you'll, you'll be, be happy. <laughs> it's not like that, except it really kind of is um, a great methodology. So here they are. It's called Rich Theory, and that's another acronym. And I know we love acronyms in education, so it we fits. Do. I'm cool with it. <laughs> um, the four pillars are access to resources for adults and for kids. So if we have access to resources as adults, you feel good. If, if I need to go buy some chips and salsa, and I can do that, it feels good. Oh, chips and salsa chips and always feels always. good. Always. Yeah. Always. And if I don't have the money to buy chips and salsa, you're a anxiety. little bit absolutely. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing for kids. And then you got to break it down for kids. What What are resources in kids' life? Well, it's peer groups, right? Mm -hmm. It's um, uh, video games. It's whatever. That's the resource that they have. If they don't have access to those, they're a little bit anxiety does spike, and and they're a little bit less happy. But that's only one area. The second one is intimacy, and we've talked about that, right? I was telling you, I've seen a shift in 10 years. I've been doing trainings all over the country for over a decade. And this joke used to get huge laughs. And now it's just more like giggles. 
the joke would be, can you believe going in front of a school board saying our kids need to learn more intimacy? <laughs> and people would be like, oh, that's insane. You can't even say that yeah, in a school. You said that. <laughs> and the, it used to be like kind of a big laugh. And now we say it and they're like, mm -hmm, you're right. That's good. Mm -hmm. And so um, intimacy is not just romantic intimacy, even though that's a part of it, but just having learning good buddy skills. How, how, do you, how do you find buddies that you'll have for the rest of your life? that you can only count in one hand, and that's the, that's the norm, right? And then competence is the third one out of this rich acronym. I believe working in public schools for my, most of my career, I think schools do a fantastic job with this. Um, I work with kids um, struggling with, with things like dyslexia and lots of learning disabilities, and even, even really you know, low incidence or really significant disabilities, and you see them become competent in skills. And that's a tip of the hat to every educator, every parent, and it turns out we strive for mastery, which is great because it's a high expectation. But to be happy, you need to be competent in one academic area. Um, you can get by. And a lot of educators, that sounds, might sound like, well, that's a low standard. And I'm not saying to anybody to lower their standards, but happiness is a little bit, a little, it's dynamic when it comes to proficiency and mastery. So that's a good one. And then the last one is the H is a healthy lifestyle, which is, I, I have a local pediatrician with whom I work who is convinced that there is a constipation epidemic in our little valley up in Utah. And he says, kids eat cheese and white uh, flour and they sit 90 degree angles and never drink water. You do the math. And he's like co convinced with this. And I'm like, "That's you're insane, this is weird. And then <laughs> you hear about it and you listen and you work with kids and you're like, actually this is a thing. I don't know if they're hydrating. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're well sleeping. And I certainly am not sure about their diets. And if you encounter these areas, if you ever run into a kid who's really stressed or anxious or struggling, always be sensitive to what's going on in their environment, but don't forget to ask, how is your diet, how is your sleep, and how is your exercise? Mm -hmm. Those things contribute 100% to someone's well-being. So the, the research and the story goes, if you have one of these things going, you're, you're happy. But if you got all four, you're literally like blissed out. You're just like, life is good. And, and I think those are the areas that, that we should emphasize in school, and how do you create opportunities to do that? In special education, I draft goals, and in my book there's a, an appendix, like a tool that is just out there. You can draft IEP goals, or, and you know, if a, if a kid isn't on an IEP, learning targets with these in mind. If you bring it down to a, a kid and a family's level about how to access these four areas, the relevancy level goes way up in their education. Doing this, learning these math equations will get you access to resources. That's the R, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding these, understanding the analytic parts of math will help you in the future with your relationships. How is that? Well, talk to a married couple and ask them about their finances. You will figure out how important understanding analytic math is. <laughs> yep. um, get competent in an area so you can feel confident when you do apply for a job or you, you do wanna you know, uh, learn something new, that you'll have something to hang your hat on. And then take care of yourself. If, you know, um, the learning math and is, is mental exercise, and exercise is an important, just like for your other, you know, the other uh, important parts that you do in your life. So exercise your brain, exercise your body. And, and that all increases the relevancy of everything that we do. So I, I love the application of these things, and it's, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a real tool in our tool belt. Absolutely. And what I like is that you're making it relevant not just for students, but for parents. 100%. And for educators. Like, everyone needs to come together. Not, it's not just about students. It's about totally. all of us coming together to help our student to be successful. So I, I, I really like that about your book. Well, I'm so glad. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for reading it. You're hey, not the only, my yeah. mom isn't the only one. No, there. me too. That's me good. too. That's good. Okay. So, um, what practical advice? do you have for classroom teachers? Like, this is brand new to me, yeah. SEL, which it probably isn't. Teachers are, right. teachers are probably They're doing savvy, some of these things, sure. you know. But I, want, I really want to do this in my classroom. What, what can I do tomorrow? Yeah, so number one, honest to goodness, like take care of yourself. I'm not just saying that like PSA message, mental health professional. Um, focus on those rich areas just for yourself, right? Um, Make sure that, that you've got all things firing. And the easiest way or a really quick kind of, like make sure you, you get a break. The joke with the family of educators is like, I don't get lunch, I don't get bathroom breaks. Yeah, largest bladder, smallest stomach. Absolutely. <laughs> until My, you get home. Until you get home <laughs> and then you're like, yeah. I'm telling you right now, that's your first indicator of you should probably be practicing some more self-care. Visit with your administrators. If you really feel like your, your job is so busy that you cannot have a, a good peaceful lunch, 
or you cannot use the restroom, something's out of balance. I'm just That's gonna, a problem. It's a problem because those are like major functions. I'm a completely different human being with blood sugar differences, right? Oh my gosh. If I'm if I'm a little bit hungry, it's 2 p.m. and I'm, you know, getting the afternoon. I'm I'm not very pleasant. Mm -hmm. I can't be. So I snack pleasant, you know, all of the time. That's just part of this. <laughs> the pancake diet, just so you know if you're wondering, oh, yeah. Yum. And then, so self-care is a big one. Um, the second thing is just people are going to be throwing a lot of curriculum SEL hype language at you. Mm -hmm. When you boil SEL down, the only reason that it's important at all is because it enhances relationships, okay. personal and professional, okay. right? So educators, you got a lot on your plate. Take care of yourself because you have a lot on your plate. This is just basic advice, right? Um, allow yourself breaks, allow yourself mistakes, but focus on relationship building. If you're doing it and kids see it, they will learn a lot by you. Everyone in this room, everybody that has ever uh, has a beloved educator that you've had in your life, it had very little to do with the content, although they opened that window for you. It had everything the way that they, that they made you feel. And as educators, we get so much face time with kids. Yeah, there are a lot of them, and yeah, they're all coming from different backgrounds, and and diversity, which is fantastic. But they, we can be a human being with them. Every culture laughs, every culture eats, right? And every culture can love one another. And that's, if that's a vibe that you're going for, SEL will come to you. It'll become very natural. So you focus on those two things, uh, take care of yourself, and really build relationship skills, the rest will fall into place. I love that. Yeah. Ben, this has been awesome. Yes. Thank you so much for being here with Thank us you. today. Um, so educators out there, <laughs> go go take care of yourself. That's right. And then take care of your kids. Bam. Just like the airplane. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay.